Good morning, people. Watch from the 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ spilled his blood. <clears throat> it is the blood. I'm going to give you a suggestion. Look at Robert Breaker's uh, video on the blood. I think he just did it. It's called Where's the Blood? Something like that. Look at that video about the blood, because the blood, along with the Holy Spirit, is not talked about as much nowadays. It's the blood that we're saved. He shed his blood on the cross for our past, present, and future sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 is the gospel in which we're saved by. Christ shed his blood, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. No other way. It is grace that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. That is the gospel. <clears throat> We're saved by grace. Once you accept Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells in you. The Holy Spirit immediately comes into you and indwells in the believer. There is no separate indwelling of the Holy Spirit. There is no separate step to get the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells in the believer, and he leads the believer to righteousness. Do we mess up all the time? Every day. It's expected. That's why he died for our past, present, and future sins. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. There's a difference between living a lifestyle of sin and the everyday trials and tribulations that we as Christians go through, along with the temptations. There's a difference. We are in this fleshly body, so therefore we do mess up. And that is why he died on the cross for that. <clears throat> you will never lose your salvation. You are sealed, according to Ephesians 4.30, until the day of redemption. Now, I'm going to give you this article. And this article didn't beyond make my blood boil. Because it goes on to say, this, this proves that people are siding with the gay agenda and what's happening in the gay lifestyle. And even so-called Christians are siding with this. And it's sick. This is off a news study. It came out yesterday. Christians, Christian Adoption Service announces they will start placing children in LGBTQ elemental PQ families. Yeah. So, you know, people have omitted the Bible, the blood, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, everything. And they're just going to figure, oh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just do it like this. God won't mind. For real? Look at this. Listen to this article. <clears throat> Michigan-based Bethany Christian Services announced Monday it will begin placing children in gay families nationwide. I'm going to tell you something. And I don't care who knows it. And I don't care if you talk about me like a dog. I don't care if you run my name in the ground. I don't care if you do videos and about me. Whatever. I will never, as a child of God, accept that lifestyle. Can people change? Absolutely they can. They can change if they want to. If they want to. Bethany, one of the uh, country's largest adoption and foster care agencies, started offering services to gay couples in 2019. <clears throat> After a legal statement, a legal settlement. The company has assisted 3,406 foster placements and 1,122 adoptions in 2019. Provides services in 32 states. The new policy approved by the organization's board does not include the phrase 
<clears throat> LGBTQ, elemental PQ, whatever. But says it will implement a nationwide policy of inclusi in inclusivity in order to serve all families across Bethany's core service lines. Again, I'm going to say this again. I will never accept that. Never. But you do have, you can change for Christ's sake. Please do if you are in that lifestyle. International Agency will begin training all its employees, including those at locations that have not worked with gay couples. This is unbelievable. It goes on to say, Bethany might as well take the word Christian right out of their name and replace it with Sodom. Because placing children in the homes of gay and lesbian couples is an absolute affront to Christianity and ignores what the Bible teaches regarding homosexuality. Absolutely. In fact, in part of the statement to CBN News, Bethany admitted that they are ignoring. Listen to this. Part of the statement to uh, CBN News. Bethany admitted that they are ignoring the, teachers of, the teachings of the Bible. They told them, we're not going to go by the teachings of the Bible. And they're supposed to be a Christian adoption agency. It goes on to say, faith in Jesus at the core of our mission. We are not claiming a position on various doctrinal issues about which, Christian, which Christians of mutual good faith may disagree. We acknowledge that discussions about doctrine are important. But our sole job is to determine if a family can provide a safe, stable environment for children. Unlike many other child and family welfare organizations, Bethany is committed to partnering with churches to find as many families for vulnerable children as possible. And we seek to place children with families that share our mission. You see what's going on. This is what I'm trying to point out to you. What's good is evil and what's evil is good. This is where the church is headed. This is where the church is right now. This is where they are. Like I said, you can call me anything you want. I don't really care. I, this is bad. <laughs> this is not good. Am I saying that gays can't change? Absolutely they can change. But I said it again and I'm going to say it now. There is no such... When you change... For Christ, let me let me put it like this. When you give your life, when you accept Christ as Savior, you used to be gay, but you're not gay anymore. You're a child of God. How hard is that for someone to understand? It's not difficult. You're no longer a gay person. You are now a born-again believer in Christ. You're a child of God. Not to be associated with what the world thinks you are, but what Christ said that you are in him. It's not rocket science. This is bad. So this is their mission statement. It says, so, and it goes on to say what? So there are no good faith disagreements on what the Bible teaches about homosexuality. The Bible is not ambiguous on the subject. There are people who take it for what it says and then those who twist it to support what they want to believe. It is really simple. But this just isn't but this just is an issue of Christian doctrine. It is an issue of what's right for children. There is no one who knows more about children and family than God, and he designed the family to begin with a man and a woman. That's his high design because he knows that a child needs a father and a mother, not two mommies and two daddies. This isn't just wrong. It's just disordered and it's a mortal sin. I believe the people who run Bethany will be held for, uh, to account for putting children in these homes as well as the subsequent moral destruction of children because of it. They need to stop this policy now. I'm going to link this article in the description box. Again, you know where I stand on it, and I'm not changing that. I don't compromise. 
I can't compromise the word of God to please man. Ever. That's my stand on it. You can call me a dirty dog. You can call me whatever you want. You can call me everything but a child of God. I'm still his child, and I still stand on his word. Period. I will be back later. Thank you.